Hello everyone, so today we'll be talking about EECS 1011, Computational Thinking Through Procedural Programming and Mechatronics. My name is James Andrew Smith. I'm a professional engineer and dedicated teaching professor here at York University. My office is located across from the main Kiel campus at 4751 Kiel Street. Uh, office hours are to be determined. If you need to get a hold of me by email, eecs1011.fall2023 at gmail.com is the correct email address. My web address and blog are located on the page right there. And in the event of a failure of the email system or e-class or something like that, then I'll be broadcasting updates on Twitter via uh, the J.A. Smith underscore your Q Twitter handle. In case you want to know about my research, I do research into embedded systems, robotics, engineering, ed education, etc. Again, this course is a blended course, and we will be doing uh, pre-recorded, interactive, and asynchronous lessons that will be supported by synchronous lecture time slots. We'll be Zoom broadcasting from the physical classroom, and I'll be using that time to do question and answer sessions, and we'll be doing flip class or time-constrained homework uh, during those classes every week. You have labs as well every week in which you'll be using your own computer and you get to choose the mode in which you interact with that lab activity, whether it's synchronous, that is in person or Zoom, uh, or asynchronous in which you record a video or other deliverable by the end of the week. Now, in this class, we use something called proficiency-based grading, which effectively boils down to um, your grade is based on the amount of correct work that you do throughout the semester. The classes, again, are pre-recorded and they're available on our LMS e-class. You're expected to watch and interact at mostly your own pace. That is, it's basically an asynchronous approach to the lecture content. And there are some time constraints that we put in place to ensure that you're keeping up with the material over the course of the semester. We'll be supporting, again, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, all of that using synchronous classes in which we do Q&A as well as flip class homework sessions. Office hours will be live on Zoom and are completely optional. And the weekly labs uh, have a very strict schedule associated with them. Um, there are a number throughout the semester and they're on a weekly basis. You have some options as to whether you use the synchronous or asynchronous mode of, of, of delivery and assessment. And uh, there may be some written reports in addition to the typical video content that's required. This course doesn't have a final exam, nor does it have a midterm exam, uh, nor does it have lab tests. It, on the other hand, has a number of uh, labs, projects, and homework activities to do. All students are expected to engage in the main project, and students that want to get a higher grade can engage in the bonus project. How does this all work? Well. Basically, most students will be aiming for up to a B plus component in the course, which is composed of 20% labs, 20% readings and videos, 20% uh, homework, and 20% for the main project. You do all that work and you, you get the correct score, the good score on each one of those things, and you'll get a B plus. Uh, you do less than that and your score, your grade, will be proportional to the amount of work that you did, uh, the amount of correct work that you did throughout the semester. So labs are worth 20%. The asynchronous uh, videos uh, that attract an E-class are, are worth 20%. The homework component, um, which is things like MATLAB Grader, um, crossword interactive activities, things like that, that's worth 10%. That's available on E-class. And then when we do flipped classes in class, that'll be worth 10% for your grade. And then finally, that main project, which is a plant watering project, is worth 20% of your grade. From there, students that want to do a second project, that is the bonus project, uh, can top up uh, their grade by up to 20%, and that can lead to either an A or an A plus in the course, and there'll be more details on this later on in the semester. Okay, so once again, how are we being assessed in this class? There are no tests in this class. 80% of your grade is based on homework, the interactive videos that you do on e-class, the main project, and the lab activities that you do. The other 20% uh, 
is based on a bonus project. So if you do the first 80% and, and you get everything right, then you walk away from this class with a B plus. If you do all of that and you do the bonus project, you can get an A or an A plus in this class. When are you being assessed throughout the semester? Well, the main project and the bonus project are both due at the end of the semester by the last day of class before the final exam period for the other courses in the, uh, in the program. The lab components are done once per week. If there's a pre-lab, it's due on the Sunday night before the lab. If there is a lab deliverable like a lab video or a PDF report, those are due on the Sunday night after the lab uh, is scheduled. The flip classes are, are going to be on Wednesdays during class, and you can gauge with that either in person or on Zoom, because I'll be Zoom broadcasting the classes, and uh, the activities will be available online for you to complete. Uh, there'll also be videos, readings, and interactive activities that are, are done in each module throughout the semester. All that said, now we can talk about the content of computational thinking through mechatronics. The objectives of 1011 are threefold providing a first exposure to procedural programming, teaching students a set of soft computing skills such as reasoning about algorithms, tracing programs, and test-driven development, demonstrating how computers are used in a variety of engineering disciplines. We have a problem-based pedagogy that uh, exposes the underlying concepts and an experiential lab in which to implement those concepts. We're going to be using an integrated computing environment, uh, in this case MATLAB, um, so that you can pick up key programming concepts such as variables and control flow without being exposed to really complex or abstract constructs that are typical of other programming languages. The problems are, are chosen uh, in consultation with various engineering disciplines in the faculty um, with a view of exposing how computing is used in those disciplines. So, and you'll see that especially in the lab components of the, of the course. Now, uh, computational thinking really is about understanding problems, like the problems that we see in engineering. And we uh, want you to think about those problems in a way that uh, allows for practical formulation of solutions that can be implemented on a computer. That's effectively what we're trying to get at here with this computational thinking course. Why, as an engineering student, should you care about computational thinking or even mechatronics, which is sort of the venue or vehicle that we use for uh, exploring computational thinking? Well, 1011 is, is a foundational course in all of the engineering uh, programs in the Lausanne School. Here we're going to look at design tools. It's uh, designed to be interdisciplinary on purpose because this is a first year class. Um, we get important input from the other stakeholders in, in the in the programs throughout Lausanne, and it's the first part of your two-part computational thinking sequence in uh, the first year of, of engineering. Basically, most engineering applications in today's world combine some elements of microprocessors, sensors, actuators, programming, and instrumentation, and so this really is a first taste of that sort of thing, um, and that's why we do it. In terms of the basic schedule, it's important to note that all of the times that are listed in this course are with respect to Toronto in Canada. A lot of the material is asynchronous and pre-recorded, which gives you a lot of flexibility with how you engage with that material. We do want to make sure that you're keeping up with the material, so we do have scheduled class times, and those are listed either for section E or F, and so you're generally expected to, uh, to, to follow the schedule for your particular section. Most of the time, the, the classes are uh, optional. There'll be question and answer sessions, except for when we have flipped classes, and that's basically an in-class homework session, and those will be on Wednesdays. The lab times uh, are, um, are, again, restricted to your particular registration. We'll be having in-person and parallel Zoom sessions so that you can engage either over Zoom or in person. And you have to use your own computer equipment to, to do the labs. So you can do that from home or you can do it in person. In the Lassonde School, we place a lot of emphasis on course learning outcomes or CLOs. And you'll find in all of your courses that there are learning outcomes associated with them. And there'll be details like the ones here that you'll see here that associate both the general learning outcome for a program and the specific learning outcome for your course together. And often they'll be stated in terms of rubrics that show you what you need to do in order to get uh, uh, 
a meeting expectation grade, a below expectation grade, or an exceeding expectation grade. Now, in this course, we have eight learning outcomes. The first one, apply a soft computing skill such as reasoning about algorithms, problem solving, unit testing, or debugging. That's the first one. The second one is explain and apply fundamental constructs and procedural programming, including variables and expressions, control structures, and documentation. The third one is write simple programs using a contemporary integrated development environment. The fourth one is use the computing environment to implement or simulate selected applications from science, math, and engineering. The fifth one is programmatically plot data from a computer-connected sensor. The sixth one is the health and safety one, which is demonstrate WMIS-1 competency. The seventh is interface sensor or actuator uh, hardware with any required modifications to a computer. And then lastly, there's express an ethical dilemma or conflict in the context of active bystanding. So there's a wide variety of learning outcomes in this course, all really important for the uh, basic introductory courses in first year. You will interact mostly on the eClass website with this course, so eclass.yorku.ca. Uh, you'll be able to uh, find it under my courses and make sure that you're added to uh, that. Uh, otherwise, bring it up with me so we can make sure that you are um, uh, linked into the course. If for whatever reason there's a problem with communication, uh, eClass goes down or something like that, take a look at Twitter and I'll use the EECS 1011 hashtag from JA Smith underscore your Q in order to communicate things in the event E class goes down. Now, the textbook for this course is free, or at least free to you. Uh, we've paid for it through a license uh, in the York University Library. The book is, call is called uh, MATLAB A Practical Introduction by Stormy Attaway. It's the 2019 version of the book, and you see the uh, URL short form right there that you can use to get access to it, or you can go to library.yorku.ca to access the book. You'll be able to engage in the labs using either the synchronous options, uh, one or two, so go to the lab in person or to go to the lab over Zoom. You must attend lab sections that you are in, enrolled in, and you're not supposed to switch between lab sections because that requires a re-registration in the course. For those of you who can't attend or choose not to attend the class itself, you need to submit your lab demonstrations asynchronously, generally in video mode, by the end of the week on Sunday nights at 11.55 p.m. Lab reports and lab videos, depending on whether you're doing that or not, um, are to be submitted to the uh, eClass site as well, and those are done um, and submitted by the Sunday after your lab. Again, do it 11.55 p.m. Don't be late because it won't get graded. And, um, and so this applies to any uh, lab reports that you might have to do or videos that you record and submit. In order to do the lab work, you're gonna need to your, use your own computer and the TAs will help uh, with those lab activities, but you're expected to maintain your own hardware and uh, you're expected to install MATLAB, which is freely available through a license paid for by the Lausanne School. Um, and you can download MATLAB from the MathWorks so mathworks.com, and you're going to get version uh, 2023A or 2023B this year. And then later on, we'll be uh, installing the Arduino hardware support package into MATLAB, and we'll show you how to do that later on. Now, again, the labs require the use of the MATLAB uh, IDE or MATLAB application. You're required to get the lab kit, the physical lab kit from the bookstore, to purchase it from the bookstore. There's also a multimeter in the bookstore uh, to obtain if you don't already have one. The labs require direct access to USB, so you should make sure that you have a USB cable that is compatible with your computer. That might require hubs, but we tend to um, suggest that you use a direct cable instead of a hub. That tends to work out better. When going to eClass, look for the individual uh, numbered modules. And within it, you'll see tabs like the learn and practice tabs. And that's where you'll typically find most of the material for your uh, individual modules. This week, we're gonna be starting with module one. Go to the learn tab, look at the exercises there. Then from there, go to the practice uh, session where you'll uh, see the online women's training and online MATLAB on-ramp uh, link. Once you're done with that, start working on module two. 
and then install MATLAB and also go to the bookstore and buy the lab material. Now for lab A, which is the WMIS and MATLAB on-ramp, it's important to reiterate that there is no in-person lab for the week in which lab A is supposed to happen. So uh, in-person or Zoom labs only start with lab B that's in module three. Lab B will be the first uh, synchronous lab um, and that will be in uh, week three or module three of the course. So the WMIS and MATLAB on-ramp training you are to do on your own and you are to submit it before the start of module three. This course has been the result of the efforts and hard work of a number of different people, um, including all the people that are listed here. It's important to point out that there will be some uh, technician support uh, this year. Uh, two of our technicians are uh, Mr. Eric Prendovsky and Mr. Guyan Gamage. And that's it for right now. We'll move on to the next set of videos and we'll see you in class.